She left her role as CEO at one of South Africa's leading advertising agencies to start up her own consultancy focused on helping women rise to the top in this particular industry. This is Women on Wealth and I'm Nozi Pombandra. Tonight we profile the woman voted the SADC region's most influential woman in media, that's Gail Curtis. And we also speak to Paula Halley from digital advertising agency Glue, and she weighs in on the rise of women in her industry. And I spoke to Zambian media mogul Namakao Molokubai Kapia about what she has learned during her 22-year career in broadcast. Gail Curtis is worried about the decline in the number of female CEOs, especially in the media space. And yet she's decided to leave her job as CEO of Sachi & Sachi. I sat down with her to find out why. Well, I think for my case in particular, I've got to look at what my next chapter is. And um, I'm, I'm reaching retirement age. So I think I've got a good excuse for, for moving out of the industry per se. But my next chapter is going to be to focus on empowering and uh, helping other CEOs stay the distance uh, in media. I've been deeply committed um, to women in, in the advertising and communication industry. I set up the Youth Education Training Initiative Trust many, many years ago, um, which develops you know, skills uh, for, for young people. And I really felt that I want to stay involved um, with helping other women. Mm. Well, you certainly don't look like you, you're near retirement age, I'll give you that much. But let's talk about uh, your next steps and where you are now. Gail Curtis Leadership, what are you trying to achieve with that? I'm, I'm trying to really, really not only look at women within media and communication, but to look at women within a corporate business as well. And, uh, and you're absolutely right, having identified that there are not enough CEOs within the media industry, there are not enough CEOs within the corporate industry, and those that are in positions of strength are, are really, really, really finding it lonely. Um, and, and I think that often uh, they, get, they get taken into training uh, situations that are not inspiring for them. And Gail Curtis Leaders is really focusing on one-on-one -on -one mm. executive training and with uh, small groups of women where you really can have open, honest mm. dialogue. What are some of the key you know, teachings, if I may call it that, that you are imparting uh, for these women in leadership positions? What are some of the common things that you're identifying that this is a tool that will help you stay in the long run. Well, you know, women need mental toughness in adversity. Um, they need to understand that without passion, uh, you, you're not going to make it. Um, humility is absolutely key as you move up the ladder. And very importantly, not to spend too much money on looking the part um, of the executive, doing the job, doing the job well, um, and that'll make it a lot easier. Uh, what I am seeing is that a, a lot of money is being spent on looking fabulous. As a woman, we all like to look fabulous. We all like to buy lovely clothes and shoes, etc., etc. But one must be very cautious that particularly with the youngsters, um, we need to manage their expectation. They want to get there very, very quickly. Mm. Um, and they'll get there quickly and they need to stay the distance. So if they get there too fast, it's not sustainable. Mm. So I think that's very, very important. And, and, and also to take them out of a lonely space where they can actually really, really share um, in, in a space that's trustworthy. Mm. Those who are at the top and seem to be uh, holding their own against their male counterparts, what are they getting right? I think that they're not putting the fact that I'm a woman first and I can do my job second. Mm. I think they're going, I can do this job. I'm really confident in, in, in how to do this. And, uh, and, and I think the fact that they're a woman just happens to add mm. um, to their success. It doesn't stand in the way of their success. You're very passionate about mentorship. Um, yes. Are we finding those forward and backward linkages amongst women uh, across the corporate sector? I, I think it's across all sectors and, you know, and, and, and even worldwide if you look at it. Sometimes I think we're even going backwards. And, um, and I'm not sure why, but I do think that we've got to look at organisations that make provision for the fact that women come out of uh, university, they're, very, they're equally uh, yoked with their male counterparts in terms of being qualified, but they do leave the workplace mm. um, to become mothers, to have children, and their re-entry into the workplace must be enabled, and that's really important. If they've got children and they need to work, companies need to enable that as well. 
And I think that if they stay out of the workplace too long, um, they must be prepared to come back into the workplace, maybe at a lower level, and work their way uh, back. But the mentorship for me is that women don't mentor other women. Um, they don't do it well, and there's not enough of that. Why is that the case? I mean, we're always talking about lifting each other up and being rungs of hope for each other. So why aren't we mentoring each other? I, I'm not quite sure, and I'm trying to find out why. But there are not enough women that do that. And what I find fascinating is still now, through the work that I'm doing, I still come across women who go, if I have a chance, I'd rather work for a man than work for a woman. And, uh, you know, I, I really feel compelled to change that. Mm. Because I think your women are intuitive. I think they're smart. I think they're clever. I think that there's great opportunity, particularly in South Africa, uh, for women. And I think that women have a tendency maybe just to close off, mm. uh, to protect themselves. And not to sound too controversial, but I think that women tend to feel that when they get to positions of power or strength, that they're intruders in that space. It's almost like they feel... So there's no ownership of no, actually being I, in that space. I, you know, I, they, do, they don't feel deserve, des deserving of. And you know, our male counterparts feel, I deserve this. Mm. No? I, I want to quickly wrap because we're running out of time, but I know that you've been acknowledged as one of the most influential women in the media space across the SADC region. How are you hoping to leverage that influence? What does Gail Curtis's path look like in the next decade or so? For, um, the leverage that I have is if I can do it, so can you. Um, I come from an average household um, with, a, with a mother who is a fantastic mentor for me. And I want to go, I don't think that there's anything particularly special about me um, other than the fact that I have a very strong belief um, that I can do something and I can do it well. And being a woman has never stood in my way. And I want to help other women to understand that it won't stand in theirs. Stereotypes suggest that women are more creative than men, and yet the advertising industry continues to be dominated by men. Earlier I sat down with Paula Halley from digital advertising agency Glue to find out if the time has come for women to take over the advertising, marketing and media space. Who's more creative? Is it men or is it women? I wish it was as easy to define as that. Um, <laughs> I think like intelligence, creativity is such an interesting concept. Yeah. And um, I don't think they've learned how to measure it just yet. But if I look at the talented team around me, um, whether it be in the creative department, the ops department, project management, client service, tech, mm. dev, um, I think it's equally distributed. And I really think it's about the individual's ability to utilize their talent. Yeah. Um, and I see a lot of that in both men and women. So no, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, yeah. If we were to look at like your all-time most successful creative campaigns mm -hmm. uh, that you might have worked on, yes. uh, do you get a sense that women are as daring and as bold as uh, you know advertising and that particular media space requires and demands? Yes, I think you do. You definitely need to be bold. I think that women do need to lean in a little bit more and really yeah. speak at the table um, with all the talent that's around us and so many talented women, whether it be our partners, experts that we work with, people at Glue even our competitors, yeah. um, women are incredibly talented, but I do think we need to maybe speak up a bit more loudly and really join in. Mm. Um, so I think that's a great opportunity. Do you think we've figured out how to use that inherent creativity so it not only benefits us, like ourselves individually in terms mm. of our own career path, yes. but it's also leveraged for the purpose of the firm? Right, I think it, it is important. I think. Um, you know, as an individual, whether a male or a female, mm. um, I think that you, you do need to be able to express that talent. And then it is up to the firm to really see that, that potential and invest in that potential with you and sort of challenge you along the way. And, yeah. and that takes, that takes um, you know, you do need to be brave. Mm. Um, and I think that that would leverage your journey as well as the journey of the, of the agency. And, and staying on this concept of journeys, is the yes. career path easily identifiable from a junior creative mm. to a, a senior like yourself who's heading right. up a company uh, with many other staff members beneath them. Right. I think, um, well, hopefully at Glue, we do set out a clear path. I think what's really important is to look at the concept of leadership. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I think we need to take it off the pedestal. I think we need to just understand that leadership is happening in everyday moments, um, in day-to-day -day decisions. And um, I think it's really about joining in, seeing where the gap is, taking that opportunity, speaking up, and really putting your talent
environment at the table. And I find that the people that are doing that are really naturally climbing the ladder mm. and really taking advantage of that, that plan that the company hopefully has and invests in with them. Let's talk about making money. The most creative and most lucrative agencies, mm. what are they doing right that those who are in pursuit of money uh, could right. follow? Right, I think that um, just like for the individual, a company really needs to understand what it's good at. And I think it needs to speak truly to those values and then to share that with their clients or their consumers so that they understand the exchange of value. Mm. So if it's a creative sort of intellectual property or a product that you're creating, to really um, help the consumer or your client understand the value of that mm. and then to ensure that that value is reciprocated. Um, so I think that's a good way to make money. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, for those uh, that are on the outside, wanting yes. to get into the industry, mm. how should they be thinking about uh, the, their, their way into the industry and maybe even you know the prospects of working right at the bottom, what's that like? Right, we interview a lot of interns and we've actually hired quite a few interns lately. The ones that we, we hire, so those who are on the outside trying to get in for the first time, are those who are really true to themselves, who, who know what they want and are kind of just kind of expressing that and wanting to get involved and in that um, to find a company that has a similar value set so that the two can sort of marry and mm. then really from there the sky's the limit. Every week we bring you a woman who is flexing her power muscles on the global stage. I spoke to Namakamu Lekabai Kapia, she's the Managing Director of Indigo Events and Media in Zambia, about what holds women back in the broadcast and media industry. In broadcasting my 22 years, I've focused more on news anchoring. Um, but what I can say, what holds back people, especially here in Zambia, is uh, the negative, the negative contents that goes around with uh, being a broadcaster. Uh, for example, whether you change your surname, or for example, whether you, you divorce, because your life is actually on public. You, you, you live your life in public, in public. So in Zambia, we're very conservative people. So you find that most people don't really want to bear their souls. I mean, I've, I, was, I joined broadcasting when I was about 18 and a half. So I've literally lived my entire life, I'm 41 now, I've lived my life in television, I've been married, I've been divorced, I've been married again. So all that has happened in public view. So you've got to be very brave to actually broadcast in, in, in Africa. And that's all we have time for for this week's episode of Women and Wealth. Be sure to pick up your copy of this Sunday's City Press to find out about another winning woman, Duke South Africa MD, Sham Chetty. Remember that we do like to talk to you, so do follow me on Twitter at Nozi And don't forget that our hashtag is WOW410. We would like to know who you'd like to see on the couch and, of course, who is redefining the concept of power in your world. Until next time, stay empowered.